right, tell us about this place. Where are we, Gabriel? All right, so this is the Coastal Discovery Center. Uh, it's run by NOAA, but it's on state parks land. As you can see, there's like other state parks areas around here and entrance. Um, generally, this place is meant to be an area where people can come and learn about the wildlife here because it's pretty well known for elephant seals and sea otters and other things like that. Uh, right, off the right off the coast here, we're in the Morro Bay National Marine Sanctuary, which is a NOAA sanctioned area to uh, where we have like protections for in place for various species and also just for the waters in general so that they can't be disturbed by things like offshore drilling and other things like that ideally, um, fingers crossed. Um, and then what we generally have been doing for the last few months now is uh, the, I don't know exactly what happened with the power grid, but it melted. yeah, the power grid <laughs> basically collapsed. So we haven't been able to do, run a lot of the indoor exhibits in a while. And so we've just brought everything out here that we can. Um, but basically, yeah, generally we're usually just here to like answer people's questions or like direct people. A lot of people come here wanting to know about like Hearst Castle or about the elephant seals or just other places in, around the area. Um, but generally, we also do like some outreach stuff with kids on Saturdays. We have uh, groups of kids come uh, out to the field here and we'll give them different little uh, short lectures about like, you know, like whales and krill and like, or plankton or just like other kind of basic oceanography stuff. Um, but generally it's just meant to be a place where people can come learn a little bit more about what goes on in the Morro Bay or Morro Bay, Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary. <laughs> Um, I didn't correct you. I didn't. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Um, what kind of people come know. by? Like, are, is it old people mostly? Young people? Uh, definitely a lot more old people. It, I, I'm sure most of you guys have probably seen a majority of old people in this area. I feel like generally this is a place like Cambria and San Simeon is kind of an area where a lot of people go to like retire or have like a second vacation home or something. So I feel like generally I would say probably like 70 percent 60 percent of the people that I see I don't know like the exact demographics because we do actually record how many people come through but um, I would say like it's either a bunch of old people or it's like families visiting from like out of the country usually a lot of people come from like Europe and stuff weirdly enough um, or from like East Asia as well I would say those are like the two main places where like tourists are coming from um, but generally, a lot of people, yeah, a lot of, mostly older people probably. And how has the closure of PCH affected you guys? Is it way down or just down a bit in terms of the visitors that you guys get? I don't know. Not necessarily. Our, our visitation hasn't decreased. I do, we do get a lot of people that come in stopping by thinking that it's still open. Um, and then they actually have to turn back. So in a way... It doesn't, it doesn't, it hasn't really affected us. Hmm. Um, yeah, I don't think most people are coming from like above North Sur or above Big Sur to like come to this place specifically generally. So I feel like it's kind of a arduous drive to do for that. But I think, yeah, I feel like most people who come through are asking about like, yeah, PCH closure and stuff. And I guess you guys already went to talk to Caltrans today, but I think the, uh, I don't know how long the closure's been now. It's been like a, a year or so. It's been like at least two years. Yeah. And it keeps getting pushed back. Yeah. It was supposed to be this month, and now it's next Yeah, the July. guy that's going to meet us here in a minute is, will talk to us about that part of the realignment and stuff. Oh, cool. Um, yeah. What's the most surprising question you've gotten from the public yet? Surprising. Or bizarre. I don't know. Do you have one? No. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, oh, I didn't. I didn't introduce, but this is Allison. She's the volunteer coordinator for Hi, the, Hi. the center. Um, I don't know. Weirdest question. Or funniest question? How about that? Uh, I don't know if there's like as many funny questions I've heard, but I definitely heard some funny comments about like people, like thinking like. Like sometimes a lot old, with older folks, they like to tell you what they think is true as opposed to like <laughs> learning from you. And I feel like sometimes when I try to explain like physiological stuff about like the fur, the skulls to them, like I'll start to talk about it and then they'll kind of just blurt in with their own explanation that's like completely wrong. For like five minutes, they'll just go on. Where it's like, 
I'll talk about how like, oh yeah, like this sea otter fur is super soft and dense and that's because they don't have like very thick blubber like these uh, harbor seals. But a lot of people get like the false notion that, oh, like the, the sea otters must be super, super warm in the water. But in real life, the sea otters are constantly losing heat to the water, even with that super thick fur. And they have to be constantly eating all the time to like maintain their body heat. But it's like things like that, that I don't know, people just have like the wrong notions, but don't really want necessarily to always hear the correct, yep. the, the, the science behind it, I don't know. All right, well there you go, public interpretation. Yeah.